Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the best and the worst of the LEGO Train Build Challenge series. This is going to be a video showcasing my favourite models and my least favourite models throughout the build series. It was a very interesting challenge. It was nice to be able to take a ton of bricks and just take them apart and put them back together again. It was really fun to do that. And I think it's something I might try again in the future. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but it would be nice to give that another go. Not with any of my other models, because they're all too precious, obviously. But on screen now should be the original model that I made a long time ago, which was just something I threw together. That then inspired the Build Challenge series. And again, some of the models I'm very proud of, others I am not. But that's all a good thing because it's levels of creativity coming out and yeah, it's all, all exciting, all good times. So let's move on to what I thought was my... We're going to start off with the worst models and then we'll move on to the best models. This is my third worst model. So at the number three spot at the third worst of all of the models was the Switcher. It was... Not a good looking model at all. It was frankly a little bit lazy. There were a few cool ideas with the idea of having the battery box being four studs wide and taking that to be part of the main body as well as using the 1x2s that are three bricks tall that have that kind of edge, like that a really thin wall edge to it so you could hide the wires in from the infrared receiver. That was all a really nice interesting build idea. But taking in all of the other things about it, like the standard sort of simple wheelbase, the tiny cab, again with how the kind of train just looked overall, it was not visually pleasing. It wasn't anything too exciting either. It wasn't exactly an original idea, so to say. Some of these were actually based off real trains, and of course switcher trains at that sort of length do exist. But the problem is, it's just not a good model. You look at it and you think, what the hell is that supposed to be? The height does not help it either. Again, I mentioned in the video that it is supposed to be a lot lower down. But I couldn't really do too much about that due to the height of the battery box and all the power functions being put together. So, all in all, it's not the worst model, but I've definitely made better diesels than that. Let's move on to what the second worst model The second worst model had to be the small truck it was the second to last model it was uh, as i said in the video it was just a cheap quick model it was nice to get a truck made and you can make something that small with some better details but with the bricks that i was limited to i couldn't really provide that much detail and again given how it's so small it's again as i've mentioned so many times it's just a cheap throwaway model it's nothing special and frankly, it doesn't stand out as a good model. There was a longer version that I named the gondola car. It used the main base, it used both of the uh, wheel sets, like the motorized wheel set. It had a longer sort of body, and it's basically the big truck, it's the truck, but it's longer. That actually looks nicer because, again, with the wheel bases, it looked better, it was more visually pleasing. And again, a bigger truck is. I suppose more practical but ultimately something that small and something especially with how quickly that i made it it's like uh, definitely not something that you would keep i suppose i've made trucks and rolling stock items to be that small and that simple before but again with the whole limiting factor of this series it doesn't stand out at all but it's not the worst i think we can all universally agree what would come in at number one. The worst model out of the entire series, by far, it's unanimous. It was the third model. It was the box diesel thingy. It's, it's more of a box than it is a diesel. So the idea was to just use, I wanted to be able to use the power functions and a diesel was obviously going to make it on the list. But I wasn't exactly sure how to do that with the limited bricks. So I thought, right, let me just try and get everything together first, let me try and hide the battery box somehow we can try and figure it out from there I ended up using a lot of bricks around the back where the power functions were all sat and then I got to the front and thought well what am I going to do because so far it's just 
a big green wall. So I ended up making this front little cab area. And that's just how the train came about. Looking at the front of it, the windows and the whole kind of little sticky out little horn sort of details at the front of the roof don't actually look that bad. But looking at the rest of it, it's just so boring. I'm kind of glad I was able to move on from that because it was at that point where I thought to myself, right, if this is all I'm going to be making, I'm going to have to can the series because it's not going to do me any favours. Nobody's going to want to watch videos of boring models like this. But frankly, I picked myself up and I got on to make better models. There's another diesel that makes it onto the top three list, but we'll get to that in a moment. But ultimately, that's one of the worst things I have ever made. And here's the hope and I never make something like that ever again. Right. That was the bottom three. Those are the three worst models from the series. We're now going to take a look at some of the highlights with the best three models in this. So the number three spot, the top third model, was the upside down train. This was a very fun creation for a couple of reasons. First of all, the upside down aspect engages that challenge like how would you go about building the rest of the model you know what your bricks are the right way up but how would they look when they're upside down the idea of using bricks upside down can also allow you to get some different shapes so as i mentioned in the video there's the two by two kind of that traditional slope brick i had loads of them and i only had two of the inverted versions of those bricks so I thought, right, for the wheelbase, I'm going to add a bunch of those to like, where the wheels are before that big base plate adds to the boiler. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, the idea was to be able to use that to get some different details. It was also nice to try and use those. Again, it was just a fun challenge. I was able to use the two golden pieces that I used for the whistles in a slightly different way as well because they're cone-shaped. So they are wider at the bottom than they are at the top. But turning that around and putting them on top of each other, it looks like a taller, more proper whistle. And I really liked that. And just all in all, looking at the train, it's it looks pretty standard. It looks like it's just like the first one. But again, with the idea of, oh, let's challenge myself, let's build it upside down. That was very cool, that was very fun, and I enjoyed that. I really did enjoy that. I also enjoyed taking it apart to make the next model. Speaking of the next model, let's move on to my second favourite from the So coming in at number two, this is obviously a standout model. It is the American Diesel. This is just unbelievably cool. With the bricks that I was limited to, the shape was just amazing. Obviously it would be better if I was to go into that four wide sort of area near the back of the model. But I think it was ultimately better to keep that whole green look. Got plenty of details along the top with the roof, using the 2x2 two two black circular bricks, that was really good. I was able to capture that look at the front as well with that sort of nose shape, using the 1x6 brick piece as well. And again, with all of the power functions and those wheels, it just makes it look so good. It stood out so well and I absolutely loved that diesel. I do have the potential and the ability, in fact, to make a more accurate diesel. I do have loads of other bricks, obviously. And, again, it's definitely something I can actually go ahead and make. But the idea of having another diesel on my railway is not my sort of thing. But that alone shows me that, yeah, the diesels are cool. You can absolutely make something like this. And they are surprisingly easy. I suppose the most complicated thing about that model would be how you would capture the wheels because American diesels do have a simple look along the top because it's you know it's thin and it's a little bit wider at the cab area and it's all thin again but along the bottom when you've got all those wheels there's all these kind of brake details how many wheels they actually have sadly they couldn't capture that on the model but again that's a bloody cool model you cannot deny that so yeah that is my second favorite and now it's time to reveal what came in at number one, my all-time favourite model from the series. The Steampunker. This is by far the coolest model of them all, in my opinion. 
I nearly put the top three list as all steam engines. The large tank engine was definitely up there. The first model, which was just a standard tank engine, that was going to be on there too. The Sterling single tank engine, that as well. But of all of the steam engines that I made, the Steampunker is by far the coolest model. The piston rods go upwards instead of going sideways connecting to other drive wheels. It only has two drive wheels on the model instead of using all six. It has a very funky shape, especially at the front where the pistons actually need to fit into an area to allow the wheels to move. It also has a cool shape at the front of the model using plenty of black bricks. The, the 2x2x2 special slope bricks from the 317 train with those stickers. There at the front, that makes it look even better. I'm using the cow catcher. Definitely a stand-up piece when you're making steam trains. I was able to give it a tender, which was a little bonus as well. It wasn't exactly planned when I was making it, but again, I had the parts. So I thought, yeah, let's just give it a tender. And you know what? I'm looking back at it now, and it kind of reminds me of Stevenson's rocket. Small tender, drive wheels at the front, uh, piston rods that are going upwards. That wasn't actually planned, but you know what? I made my own little Stevenson's rocket from that, and I'm actually really proud of it. But yes, it's the most coolest model of them all especially for the steam engines and it's just amazing to look at i don't need to make another one because again it has quite a lot of relation to stevens's rocket so yeah that's that and you know what i hope some of the people have seen these models and have been inspired to make them as well so there we go that is the best and the worst of the challenge series this has been a blast to make i have absolutely love doing this series and again as i mentioned a moment ago i hope people have taken inspiration from this just grab as many bricks as you can and just make whatever you can it doesn't have to be trained specifically there are people that love making lego trains and there are other people that love making their planes cars buildings whatever else they will have the bricks there but they won't be able to make the models that they want to because they might have creation limits or they won't know how to put bricks together they might even just be a bit too scared to do it i've done that before oh yeah i've been scared to make something i think well what if it doesn't turn out well especially as i'm putting these models online if people go oh my god that's a shit model it's going to be a bit downgrading but something like this can help push that limit if you have a bunch of bricks just sitting in the box Tip that box out and just make whatever you can. I did it. You saw me do it just now. So why can't you? If I can do it, if some scrawly little nerd on the internet can do it, why the hell can't you? That is probably the best thing I can say about this. So there we go. I hope everyone has enjoyed this series. I hope to see some of the cooler models in the future that have taken place from this series. Thank you all ever so much for watching. It's been a long month for me having to make all of these models. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you all in my next episode.